a fatal day, and the wind begins to speak with a roar that no man can fail to hear. In a 40 mile an hour gale, the center span weaves like a ribbon in a swinging twist that you wouldn't believe possible unless you could see it as you do now. There's an automobile caught on the heaving roadway. The 11,000 ton center span twists and strains the giant cables that support it. Cables of 6,300 wire strands, each 17 inches thick. Back out of the danger zone, all stricken spectators are driven to safety as the bridge gyrates like a nightmare high above the river, twisting, turning, curling. The lone motorist is forced to abandon the car. He has but a few minutes in which to save himself. Face to face with fate, his destiny hanging in the balance. Will he heed the last warning or perish with the doomed structure? But he saved himself by seconds. No structure of steel and concrete can stand such a strain. Steel girders buckle and giant cables snap like puny threads. There it goes! Engineers are divided as to the cause of the disaster. Some claim it was the use of solid girders, others differ. But whatever the reason, Tacoma will rebuild. This time a bridge that will not provide a super thrill in the news. This is the new Tacoma Narrows Bridge as it looks today. They learned their lessons after the original bridge failed. I am crossing this bridge on my way home today and it makes me think about the interesting bridges and the stories of some really peculiar bridges as I grew up mostly in the Northwest. At the turn of the century in Seattle, the waterfront looked like this and it was known affectionately as Railroad Avenue. Well, as the town grew, they decided that they wanted to make a bridge over the railroad yard and make it so that cars could get more easily down Alaskan Way Boulevard to downtown Seattle. What they ended up with was this, the Alaskan Way Viaduct, which the entire time when I was growing up, they used to talk on the news about how its failure was imminent in the event of even a mild earthquake, and it was uglier than sin, and no one really liked it. And it took until this century before people finally had enough of the old ugly bridge and decided they were going to tear it down and do something new. As you can imagine, Tearing down a viaduct that crosses a downtown area was expensive and time-consuming and completely clogged and snarled traffic in downtown Seattle for years. But when it was all over said and done, what they did was actually kind of magical. The new waterfront area now is completely open and it is absolutely beautiful. So sitting here, I have decided that I wanted to share some of the stories I grew up with here in the Northwest about bridges. The Chow Chow Bridge is another very interesting story. It's in Grace Harbor County, which is where Montesano is, where I live. It's actually not very far away. Built in 1952, those suspension cables that you see are two and a quarter inch cables and each one has a test strength of 206 tons. After being built, 
It collapsed in 1964 and was completely rebuilt, but it collapsed again in 1973. By this time, it became kind of a joke that it was the bridge that was haunted and it couldn't stay up. It managed to collapse again in 1988 and it was never rebuilt. And there will never be another bridge in that spot on the Quinault River again because even today it is considered haunted. Here is the remnants of the bridge from the 1988 collapse. Oregon, our neighbor to the south, had a much easier time with bridges than Washington did because they hired this man who was born on the 30th of May, 1887 in Redfield, South Dakota. Condi Balcom McCullough was a bridge builder like few other people on planet Earth. He went to work for the newly formed Oregon Department of Highways in 1919. A young kid fresh out of college and still wet behind the ears, they decided that they would give him a relatively easy bridge to design, the old Young's Bay Bridge in Astoria, Oregon. It is a drawbridge which opened and closed to allow the boats to return from the sea and make it to the boatyard for the Bumblebee Tuna Cannery. The shipyards primarily built these small crafts shown here, which were affectionately known as a Columbia River bow picker. But they built other kinds of boats too, including a great deal of them that they shipped north to work in Bristol Bay. Those boats were known as a Bristol Bay bow picker. They worked on all the fishing boats and even the motor yachts that were owned by the executives. During World War II, they built landing crafts and shore patrol vessels. It was quite a place. I'm old enough to remember when it was in operation, and I'm also old enough to remember waiting to cross the old Young's Bay Bridge when the span was open and you would have to sit there for a half hour while all the little fishing boats trickled through the opening. The craftsmanship involved in building an all-wood boat like this is unbelievable. It does make a person wonder where these craftsmen ended up. The state of Oregon was extremely pleased with their new bridge engineer. The bridge was completed on time and under budget. They decided that they wanted to continue the highway on south toward California from Astoria. The new highway would be known as US 101. US 101 runs almost the entire length of the American West Coast and they approached their new bridge engineer about all of the bridges that they would need to go across the entire state of Oregon. All in all, Mr. McCullough designed 160 bridges and there's no way to cover them all, but this is the Alcea Bridge at Waldport, Oregon. This is the Depot Bay Bridge in Depot Bay, Oregon. It goes across the mouth of the world's smallest natural harbor. This is the Yakina Bay Bridge, which I believe is one of the most beautiful bridges on planet Earth. The Sayusla River Bridge. The Cape Creek Bridge. This is the Rocky Creek Bridge, and it is along an area on the Oregon coast that is beautiful beyond description. He worked for the Oregon Highway Department until they began work on the Pan American Highway and he went down there and designed their bridges. In his lifetime he designed 160 bridges. One of the last bridges he designed bears his name. This is the Conde B. McCullough bridge across Coos Bay, Oregon. He was laid to rest in Salem, Oregon in 1946. His wife lived a few years later, 
and was laid to rest in 1954. He designed 160 bridges in his lifetime, from Oregon all the way down to the very end of the Pan American Highway. I leave you now in Astoria, Oregon, 1942, next to the old Young's Bay Bridge, one of the first bridges designed by Conde B. McCullough. Remember, everybody, be good to one another, do good deeds, think good thoughts, and if you should happen to remember it, say a little prayer for the wandering ponderer and his wife who is battling COVID. I will see everyone on the next adventure. Bye, everybody. Bye.